Okay, so welcome back um, to this XML HTTP request um, set of tutorials. This is going to be the last one. It should be short. Um, but what we're going to do is kind of just cover um, a couple of things to take note of um, to not forget. <laughs> All right, And I, I tend to forget them. Now, it's one of the most important things is this one line here. So if you're going to do a post request, you need to make certain that you've got this one line in. Now, this line has to go in all right, after the open method, and it has to go before the send method. Okay, And let me, let me just, um, first of all, let's refresh this. Okay, send the data back. Let's send it back again. Okay, and as you can see, everything all works perfectly fine. We get all the post information. Now, if we come to the, the server, and if we say, um, let's say, print our um, post, okay, and we get rid of this time. We don't want that for now. And for the sake of being able to um, see the text now inside of the box, because I don't really want this one anymore. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say document dot uh, get element ID and the box, the text area which we're going to insert the text into um, is this and we're just going to uh, concatenate it on and we're going to access the response text element of the XML HTTP uh, response as such, the request but the response. Um, and that's where all the data is going to be stored, the textual form is going to be stored. Okay, so we're just going to add it um, onto there when we get um, a status of 200 and a status text of um, OK. Alright, so we know that ready state 4, status 200 and status text um, of OK, then we know we're all good to go. Okay, so let's just um, show that first of all. Okay, let's send back and we can see that we get the data here. Okay, and we do it again and we get the data there uh, once again. Now, if we now remove this line, okay, and we refresh this, now I'll show you what you get. Okay, so now you get an empty array. The server doesn't know how to deal with um, the information, okay. Well, first of all, it's not that it doesn't know, it, it just doesn't know it's there. Okay, it's not looking for it because you haven't told it uh, on the server that it needs to um, encode or de um, de encode. Okay, all of the the form data that got sent across. Okay, because it's the browser's responsibility to encode all, all of this data before they send it across. Now, potentially with an AJAX call, um, we are doing the work for them, um, but we know that um, it's being sent. Now. This, just to show to you, like I said, needs to be make sure that it goes um, after the open and before the send. Okay, so let's just um, do this again, and I can show you which error message you get. So save data. See, you get an attempt was made to use an object that is not or is no longer uh, available. Okay, that's just basically because. Um, the connection hasn't been initiated yet, therefore we can't write to the um, the request stream um, with this one data. Okay, so, and if you put it afterwards, um, you, I mean it's pointless to put it afterwards, but you don't get um, you get basically the same the same error message. Although um, the connection does get sent, and we don't get any data back as such, we get the array back, but we don't get any of the post variables. Um, sent back through the print R. Okay, so that's an important um, thing to know is that you need to put this in. Now, um, although most forms within, or sorry, forms within inside of HTML, they're automatically uh, have got the content type of application XWW form URL encoded. Therefore, you don't ever have to put it in, but um, the the enc type or what it is it with inside of the uh, XML HTTP request you have to explicitly put it in um, now let's basically see whether taking out the content length in here and then just refresh this and send it we still get the data which is fine but it's just handy to know um, the content length if 
on the other side you want to be able to read this on the server if this is totally important you might want to know um, about it okay so now it comes to the um, asynchronous part of it now if we um, put the asynchronous part to, to false therefore this is now synchronous rather than asynchronous and we place some code down here after the send we say um, this is after the send function okay now because this is asynchronous all of this here okay it should call it it should jump onto another thread and it should continue straight on regardless whether this is finished or not but because we've put this to false it then becomes synchronous okay and it reads the JavaScript exactly the same way as it would read it okay so if we um, refresh this and send it you can see that okay it happened so quickly there you know 17 milliseconds that we didn't notice any difference but if we go on the server and we basically come here and we tell um, the PHP server okay um, to sleep for five seconds okay and then do it again let's just refresh it like that and now send data you see that we're going to spin for five seconds we're waiting for the um, response from the server okay then you see this is after the send function so that's running synchronously it's not running asynchronously now we go to true okay so now we're running asynchronously we refresh this click save data and you see straight away we get this is after the send function so you can see how important it is um, that if you want to run something on another thread okay on a, uh, in parallel to what you're doing here then you need to make sure that the um, the third option um, here in the open is then set to true okay so you can run asynchronously I mean it's a key feature of Ajax otherwise it would just be Jax you know it or it would be S Jax so rather than Ajax um, that's potentially nearly everything that you need to know you know about the different ready states okay you know about how to get um, the, the text back from the server you know the the steps and or the order um, which these things need to be called in okay the on ready state we can move the um, just talking about order we can move the send um, above the on ready state okay and this will still um, function perfectly fine okay as you can see there it still it still happens fine okay and it hit the the ready state three okay so that that doesn't matter um, where it goes you just need to make sure that the set request header okay is before the send and after the open okay and that a connection has been made if you're going to send back post data you need to make sure that um, this is there now if you're going to send back get data okay so we change this to get now the um, the data doesn't go doesn't get sent with inside let's put this back there down there because I don't like it being there okay the data um, or the parameters don't get sent through the send method okay this is changed to null and to send through the get method you have to then append um, it onto the URL okay so we just say then um, whoops name uh, parameters go onto here so we're then appending it on but you have to remember that if you've got spaces with inside of um, if you've got spaces with inside of the URL you then have to um, encode these as well so let's now send this one request using the get method okay and then click this as you can see okay the browser has done it for us okay but that's it, it's I wouldn't say it's the best practice it would be far better to um, to make sure that you've encoded it yourself okay just to be certain now if we go onto the server and we change this to get so and we don't need this sleep anymore and without send this once again okay so you can see now that we get um, the data that that it is that we want okay um, that's potentially uh, all that is need to know uh, ab about this okay um, yeah th I mean you've there's there's lots of other things and ways you could do it but potentially 
with the jQuery library, okay, using the Ajax, there's the um, success, there's the um, the error, um, and so on. There's a whole bunch of different uh, methods which you can use, which potentially are relevant to the different stages that the methods get called upon. Okay, so if you if you remember when you move over to the jQuery library, okay, to use Ajax, which I would hugely advise because you don't have to write all of this code every time it's just like one line of code that you need to write now you could put this into a function but then you need to attach that one code every time and maintain it whereas the jQuery library they maintain it for you okay um, so th this is why I, I really want you to understand the XML HTTP request so as you can use the Ajax library a lot better and you can really understand it um, I hope I hope that you've learned something out of this, right? I don't know whether um, I've just rambled on for, I don't know, 40, 45, 50 minutes in total, but I hope you've got something out of it. Um, now, to be quite honest with you, I've always used the jQuery library, right? And in the beginning, before I used the jQuery library, I, I did this and I sat here for ages trying to debug it and work it out and even do, doing these tutorials I haven't used this for such a long time um, that it was good for me to do some research as well to, to debug and see where things go, when, why they go and when they go. Um, now if you're interested in these um, sending packets backwards and forwards uh, as much as it's boring I would suggest just reading the HTTP protocol okay the the documentation the standard you don't have to read all of it there's there's a few um, certain pages within it that are really really um, significant to sending data to and fr um, from the server now if you also want to then look into um, using the fsoc open in php uh, to send and receive data then you get a really good understanding of uh, actually how this works okay um, so but it's it, it's kind of relevant if you you're working with PHP and you're working with websites and stuff um, knowing about this HTTP um, protocol it's kind of important stuff you know it's the core of, of packets being sent between um, clients and web servers anyway that's enough rambling from me um, I hope you learned something like I said before um, and uh, that's it I will be I will be supplying this um, this code that we've written um, shortly I, I have to just do a few modifications on my website um, to update it um, so it, there's places on it that you can um, download them I don't just want to put a zip file on my server so you can download it um, but yeah otherwise I mean it's not a huge amount of code to write uh, and so on okay that's it I hope you have um, a nice evening and I hope you have fun with Ajax in the future. I'm going to do a, a couple more tutorials uh, about using the Ajax um, jQuery framework as well um, but I just wanted to do this um, first of all but otherwise that's it my name is David Thorne thank you very much for watching come and visit me at Thorne Web Design um, on YouTube come and visit me on my Facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash Thorne Design um, if you know me, you're a friend of me and so on, come and visit me personally on Facebook. Uh, then I'm at facebook.com forward slash Thorn Web Design. Um, and come and visit my website um, is thornwebdesign.com. Um, subscribe if you like it. Um, rate the video. Leave a comment if you've got any feedback. If I said anything wrong, if I said maybe something you didn't understand. Um, good feedback, bad feedback, uh, it's uh, all good for me. Okay. Anyway, that's enough. Thanks very much and goodbye.